Greetings uh, to all of you out there today. I just wanted to jump on here uh, quickly. Uh, Gotta slay something on my heart. I want to share this today. And um, hopefully uh, you will share this on your pages and that uh, you will join us. Uh, so I'm just going to take a few minutes. Just come on in. I want to share this. Uh, but I want to talk about uh, exposing uh, a shift to the apostolic paradigm and deliverance from the religious paradigms. Amen. So I want to talk about that. Amen. Uh, a Apostle Sonia G. Amen. Uh, let me let a few uh, people come in for just a second. I'm going to dive right into this um, uh, to, as an apostle to let everybody know where it is uh, that I stand concerning this. Amen. So God bless all of you. Please share this with your friends. Uh, hey, Sister Linnea. Uh, hey, bro. What up, sis? What up, sis? What up, Sonia G? Uh, God bless you, woman of God. God bless you. Please share this. Uh, come on in. Come on in. We need to get up to at least 50 viewers. Well, I'm going to warn you today. What I'm going to say today is going to be very challenging to what uh, we've normally been exposed to. Uh, uh, but I, I believe that the, the Holy Spirit has had enough of this and he is, uh, um, the one who inspired me to share this. God bless you, uh, Elder Floyd. God bless you. Amen. Let me come on in. Just come on, share this on your page. Come on in. Uh, come on in. Just a few more people. Yeah. Come on in. Please share this. Uh, God bless you, Sister Tamika. God bless you. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Amen. But what I'm going to say today, I'm going to warn you, it's going to be very controversial. Uh, but I'm going to share this from a scriptural uh, aspect and then go and look at the scriptures and study. Uh, I'm going to share a, a little bit of church history, uh, but it's time to re expose this religious order. Amen. Uh, everybody in the New Testament church, everybody healed, everybody delivered, everybody cast out devils. Amen. Everybody did the works of Jesus and it was team ministry. All right. And I'm going to expose this. A God is laying on my heart to expose this, uh, this particular model because it has many of you today in bondage. Some that are maybe looking or maybe know someone that is in bondage uh, to this religious uh, paradigm and this religious spirit. Amen. It is so many things I can go into uh, and talk about uh, that is even connected with this religious spirit. But I want to deal with the pattern and the model that we see today. And those that are leaders are pastors. This is not an attack on you, but I'm going to tell you uh, we need pastors. And if we go to this pattern and if we go to this model and it's nothing wrong with being a pastor, let me share that. But we need to change the paradigm. We need to change our model. We need to change the pattern. Amen. So what I'm going to say today, some may think that I'm attacking uh, the pastors. I'm uh, attacking one gift. Uh, there's no dominant gift, but I'm going to tell you, amen, 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 Sonia G. Uh, shots fired. Hey, if I go down, then you don't know, send the Army SEALs. Send the Navy SEALs in. Amen. But I want to uh, share this because um, uh, many always question me about these uh uh, different things concerning the apostolic and even the prophetic ministry. Okay. So I want to talk about the model and I want to talk about apostolic uh, succession uh, as well, uh, because many are identifying themselves uh, through the apostolic session and gifting and calling. And uh, I, I'll talk about, I'll get back on here and I'll talk about the bishops and their position uh, uh, within a local church, and some of them will be upset uh, when they hear this broadcast. But they have uh, they've been uh, uh, commissioned or ordained because of the desire they have. Because he who desires to be a bishop or an elder, which means episcopos, are y'all listening to me today? 
uh, is one who feeds and guards and protects. It's a local uh, authority that they have. There is no scriptural reference for bishops ordaining apostles. Uh, we're going to talk about archbishops. and uh, we, we would have to almost think that you're connected with a diocese. Uh, OK, many of the things that the church is practicing are not from uh, an apostolic aspect or from uh, even Protestant Reformation, even in Protestant Reformation. They noticed that a lot of things that the church is doing were unscriptural. Amen. Y'all give me some hearts and give me some thumbs up. Amen. Many uh, don't want to hear this. Amen. God bless you. Uh, Sister Latina, they don't want to hear it, but I want to talk about this and apostolic succession too, and what apostolic succession is connected with and how everybody is saying there are no apostles and it's no attack. Uh, on pastors. It's no attack on senior leaders, but I'm going to give you the blueprint from the word of God. Amen. But first I want to talk about apostolic succession uh, first, and then I want to talk about uh, the models that we see today and why uh, many people don't want <clears throat> many people that come to our ministries or to come to us uh, for help. Uh, God bless you. Uh, they don't want to be trained. They don't want to be raised up. Uh, uh, they, they want many times uh, they are also trained to need just one gift. That's why when people come to a ministry, they say, who is the pastor? That's a learned behavior, and that's what they have been taught. They don't ask who's the apostle. They don't ask that. They say, who's the pastor? All right? Are y'all with me today? All right. So apostolic succession, let me talk about this. Uh, this is... This was put in place by Constantine, who is an emperor, uh, in about 306 AD and the Council of Nicaea. All right. It's the modern Isnik in Turkey. Uh, in 325 AD, the three, the, the priesthood of all the believers was usurped and taken away, basically. All right. First Peter two and nine talks about the priesthood, how we have a royal priesthood. Also, uh, the church should be full of priests. That means everybody who do, does the work of God, because we should be equipping saints for the work of the ministry. Okay? So not, it's, it's not dependent upon uh, one person. Okay? And I want to talk about this. And uh, you're not trained to only the pastor can pray for you. Only the pastor can uh, give you a word. Only a pastor. I ain't going to even talk about the prophetic and the deliverance and uh, the healing aspect of ministry that should be being done on a regular basis, okay? And Constantine was a pagan worshiper, okay? And what he did was instituted a series of bishops. That's why bishops are recognized more today or either doctors or uh, some of these things, uh, uh, you know, unscriptural. But Constantine, of course... Uh, was the one who instituted uh, these particular things. The bishop brought uh, um, uh, or believed uh, that they were direct descendants of apostles. So, uh, and one of them being St. Peter, which is connected with Papa or the Pope. Okay. And it's a spirit. Some have this Catholic spirit we need to be delivered from. This has been uh, released to us, taught to us, this order. So we believe that, okay, it's, a, it's of God. But it's unscriptural. Okay? Amen. So y'all stay with me, okay? But the institution of bishops had nothing to do with the direct calling from God. So many are out here saying that they are bishops. You're confusion to people. And then when you leave your church, you're an apostle. OK, you listen, first of all, the difference is apostles are called by the will of the Lord. I'm going to go to the scriptures in a minute. OK, being a bishop comes from a desire to fulfill some requirements and, and you desire a good work. OK, that's the reality of it. OK, y'all stay with me. But 1800, 
of these bishops in 325D uh, from the Council of Nicaea were instituted, okay, these are after the apostles died and after John died, the, which was the last one that died, and this is why some are saying that there's uh, there's no need for apostles, there's, there's no need of apostles, and they go to John 16, 13, and 1 Corinthians 13, I believe 9, 10, or 11, look, it's unscriptural, saying that the gifts are not needed, tongues won't be needed, miracles won't be needed, all of this type of foolishness to justify or to get rid of the apostles' ministry, okay? Are right, y'all listening to me? Y'all stay with me uh, today. I, I ain't going to be here on here too long, okay? But the institution of bishops, it took the ministry of the priesthood from the believer away. And what it did was threw the church into a dark age. And let me just tell you something that'll blow your mind today. We've had 2,000 years from a pastoral model to try to reach all these people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we have yet to accomplish. We have, we have yet to accomplish it. And some of you that are, you're going to be upset because there are those that are involved in Calvinism and Marxism and these different areas, you're going to be upset. But I'm going to give you some scriptures in just a minute. But I just defined to you um, uh, apostolic succession. Okay, the bishops were the sole successors of the apostles. They ordained them, laid hands on them. And so they governed both the pastors uh, and the people. Okay. This is totally different. So they have what we call, I will say, a mystical authority. And this unbroken lineage, a bishop, were uh, bishops were said to that they possess keys of the kingdom. And they believe that the Pope is the incarnate of Peter, from which the church was built on. That's why we have the Vatican and all this stuff within Rome and all of this stuff. I'll go into that by the grace of God. I'll try to go uh, into that. But what I'm telling you is that the apostles ministry never died. Okay. The, 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 the apostles ministry never was distinguished. Other than that, we'll have to say there's no more pastoral ministry, no more teaching ministry, no more evangelism ministry. And, and none of those gifts are relevant today. OK, so I, I want to expose this. OK, in at, in the book of uh, first Corinthians 12 and 28, uh, the apostle uh, was first uh, in the church, then secondly, prophets and thirdly, teachers. That was an order in which the church was to govern. I'm not talking about Ephesians 4 and 11, where we actually got to get to work equipping the saints for the ministry. And shame on you see your leaders who are not equipping, okay, who are not equipping uh, the saints or the people of God for the work of the ministry, okay? And, and many of you need deliverance from the spirit of Mithraism. And I'm going to, I'm going to talk about that. Yeah. You show you right, Sonia G. All right. Share this on the pages with your friends. Amen. Why don't you share this? Make sure you share this. Okay. Now, so if the apostle was put first in the church, then how do we just take him out? I'm not saying this because I'm an apostle and I'm going to tell you, we're not throwing away pastors. We, we're not talking about pastors. Uh, but listen, this model has done more damage to the body of Christ than it has helped. And some of you that are even viewing this cast, you, you have been trained to need one particular person and trained to need a leader instead of trained to grow up. Many places are what I would call um, a Christian, uh, Christian daycare centers where everybody is babysitted. Instead of being taught, being trained, listen, in the apostolic church, in the prophetic church, everybody, they taught, everybody cast out devils, everybody healed, because it was a priesthood of believers, amen, with Jesus being the high priest. So we got to talk about this foundation. Y'all give me just a few minutes and I'm going to conclude with it, conclude with it. But this model only uh like the current model that we see, uh, it, it revolves around just the dominant gift of the pastor, and it's a pastoral ministry. It's a pattern. 
Some say that the spirit of God is there. The anointing is there. But listen, if it is, you got to ask yourself that if, uh, if it's only a pastor there and it's not God's pattern, is he really there? Listen, he even gave Moses a pattern when he was building the temple. I believe over there in Exodus 44 or 34, he gave a pattern to, to Moses. Amen. Yes, amen, So you G. It's an ecclesia, a body of believers, uh, which we are to uh, encompass the fullness of God, his power, and all the gifts are to operate together. Uh, if you're a pastor, you're doing ministry alone. You're tired. You're doing things that you're not gifted to do. You're wore out. Your family is struggling. Many pastors monthly, they are quitting ministry because it's become so hectic. Are y'all listening to me? Because they have to do everything. Let me tell you something. God never intended for you to do everything by yourself. Amen. God bless you. So let me, God bless you, Sister Pandra. Let me go ahead and finish with this. So pastor is only mentioned one time in the entire New Testament. So the reality is we have built many churches from the pastoral model. There were no churches, uh, ever pioneered or founded by pastors. I know I'm stretching y'all now. I, I know I'm stretching y'all. Uh, I'm, I'm stretching you now. But the reality is that there were no churches ever founded by pastors. And many of you that are senior leaders, you are scared to say you're an apostle. You're, you're afraid to because you'll lose your following. Because guess what? You would have to change the pattern in the way that you do ministry. You're going to have to raise people up. You're going to have to train. You're going to have to equip. You're going to have to disciple. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister Claudette. Y'all stay with me, okay? I'm going to try just to be a few more minutes. But there were never no churches pioneered or founded by pastors. I'm going to go to the scripture in just a second. Okay? That started. Even what the one that started at Antioch, it, uh, and what Antioch means is a speedy chariot. This is a place where there was warfare and there was spiritual warfare being done and that it was a battle. They realized that it was a battle. Some of us, we can't even handle spiritual warfare. We've never been taught it. Some of us can't do deliverance because we've never been taught it. Are y'all listening to me? One of the meanings for Antioch is a speedy chariot. They use chariots in war. And Antioch also means to sin. So you have to send people out. Let's go to Acts chapter 11. Let's go to Acts chapter 11. And then we'll go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. Let's go to Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11 real quick. Starting at verse 22. Starting at verse 22. Look what happens. In Acts chapter 11 and verse 22. Um, oh, I'm going to start at verse 21. It says, and the hand of the Lord. Amen. Uh, the hand of the Lord in Acts chapter 11, verse 21 was with them and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. The news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem and they sent out Barnabas, an apostle. An apostle is one who is sent on a mission. I'm, I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit all right, or a particular assignment to go as far as Antioch. Are y'all listening to me? Y'all see this? And when he had, when he came, he, he had seen the grace of God and he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart, they should continue with the Lord. Listen to this closely. Verse 24, for he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. Verse 26, here it goes. And when he had, they had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Now, Barnabas' name means exhorter, encourager. Are y'all listening to me? Acts 11, 22, 21 through 26. Go and read it. But let me tell you, Barnabas' name, he was sent out. He was a prophetic apostle. His name means to encourage, exhort, and to comfort. God's intent for that church, the Bible says it came to their ears when they heard prophetically. They sent Barnabas out. They sent an apostle. They did not send a pastor. 
When they founded churches, they placed elders in those churches. Are y'all listening to me? Listen, Psalm 11 and 3 says, if the foundations be destroyed, what does the righteous do? The foundations are destroyed in Psalms 11 and 3. So they sent in a prophetic apostle. They didn't send a pastor in. The pastor didn't found the church and do all the work. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 and 20. Let's go over there. Ephesians chapter 2. Let me give you a picture of this. Let me give you a picture. So let me finish uh, reading this first, though. And go to Ephesians, and, and we're going to look at that in just a second. Ephesians chapter 2 and uh, verse 19, okay? In just a second. Start at verse 19. Ephesians 2, verse 19 through 22. All right, let me hurry up. I'm going a little bit too long. Let me hurry up. But listen, apostle is used 19 times as a plural, 16, 60 times as um. Uh, I mean, uh, apostle is used 19 times as a noun. It is used 60 times in the scriptures uh, as a plural form. An apostleship is four, used four times, okay? But we have taken on this Mithraic spirit is what we have taken on, okay? And, and I'm going to talk about the spirit of Mithraism too and why we see that model. OK, some might say, where did this pastoral model come from? Where did it come from? Let me explain it to you. This was instituted by our friend Constantine. All right. Uh, and so it came from the pagan religion of Mithras, the pastoral model. In, in Mithraism, every temple was led by one man, one priest. That's why we see the model that we see today. Constantine instituted this. Amen. Go look up Mithraism. I'll try to give you the meaning. So they called him father. Listen to this closely. The high priest was called the father of fathers. And the high priest of Mithras wore a ring and he wore a hat called the mitre. Hmm. And some of us are using Catholic titles. We're wearing mitres. We're wearing rings. Uh, we're, we're exchanging bishoprics. We're archbishops. You know, I know it means uh, overseer, but you don't oversee a diocese. If, if you are, listen, if you are a, a Christian and are a disciple of Christ, you're either an apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, and evangelist. Okay? That's the, them are the means of raising up a team. OK, it's not connected with one win, but some have accepted this this patronage to the church has been a change of administration. Amen. So by the Middle Ages, there were no longer prophets, teachers, pastors, apostles or or evangelists under these medieval churches led by who they call the father or papa or the pope. OK. The spirit of Mithraism. Now, the pastoral model originated in the pagan religion of Mithraism, which is a mystery religion. And in mystery religion, only the priest was allowed to know the sacred truths and perform the rituals. That's why some of you come and think only your pastor can pray for you. Only they know the secrets. Only they that can tell you what's going on. Only the pastor can. You don't have to read. You don't have to pray. You don't have to meditate. You don't have to study. You, these people were trained to need one particular person. Are y'all listening to me? This is where laity comes from. This is which is unscriptural. It separates the people and lay people. Listen, it means those that worship in ignorance and without knowledge. It separates the clergy of what they call clergy and laity, which is unscriptural. Are y'all listening to me? Reverend. These are many terms. To do. And I'm telling you, we got to quit using these terms that are connected with the White House. Are y'all listening to me? First lady, lady elect. Listen, this is our scriptural mess. You're confusing the people. Amen. Let's look at Ephesians chapter uh, 2 and verse 19. Ephesians chapter 2 and 19, it says, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with saints and members of the household of God. 
It says, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So the church was built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Okay. With Jesus being a cornerstone. Now, let me explain to you what a cornerstone is. A cornerstone is the main or center block which everything is built off of and has the foundation. So the church should be built on and extend from everything that Jesus did. With him being the cornerstone. Everything is hinged upon what Jesus did. That's what we got to get straight and whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit. You're being built, built together for a dwelling place. Are y'all listening to me uh, for a dwelling place for God to dwell? This is again talking about you being built, you being trained, equipped. Team ministry. Ephesians 4, 16 says, listen to me closely. From the home, the home body joined, knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does his share, causes growth of the body for the edifying itself in love. Everybody has something to do. Go and read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to get on here and talk about that. Why do you think that even in your natural body, when something is not operating properly or out of position, there is pain in your body to let you know that there's something that's wrong. There is pain within the body of Christ today because we don't train people. We don't equip. Our pattern is wrong. A pattern also, let me, I looked up that a pattern is a structure of ministry that serves as a model or an example. That's what many of you are accustomed to, this particular model. And I know some are not going to like what I'm saying today, but every gift and every joint must supply. A joint or a socket in your arm, legs, everything, it supplies and does a certain function. There is something for every believer to do, not be a spectator. I challenge you today to shift from into the apostolic paradigm. And if you need help transitioning your church, your responsibility, shame on you. See your leaders, if you're not training and equipping, are y'all listening to me? The people within your ministry. If you're just training them to stay on the milk, some of us, it's milk every week. Some of us are serving bottles and some of us are just passing our bills, giving bottles, and that's it. When many people should be teaching in your churches, they should be prophesying, they should be operating in our churches and in our ministry. God has given everybody something to do. We have to be really careful. And by no means am I promoting rebellion. But God said that we are supposed to, in Ephesians 4 and 12, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Are y'all listening to me? The next time we get on, we're going to talk about bishops and their position. Some of us are wearing them religious collars. Listen, those collars for war folk back in the day because they horseback ride or they rode, it just kept sweat off of their suits. We copied with the Catholic, then the Catholics took it on. Are y'all listening to me? They took this on, started wearing these collars and these different color shirts. I'm telling you, I'm not wasting money on that stuff on them robes, all that old foolishness. Are y'all listening to me? You got to get to work. It ain't about how you look. We're not God. You're not God. You're supposed to represent him. It's time to get to work, saints. It's time to equip them. It's time to shift to the apostolic paradigm and get rid of this antiquated model of the pastoral pastor paradigm in one man only. Some need deliverance from the spirit of Mithraism. Many of you today do that are probably watching this cast. I want you to sh share it today with your friends. You need deliverance from it. And it's what you've been taught. It's not your fault. And we're not condemning pastors. We're not saying we don't need pastors. They need to be taught to, to function in the area that they are. Some are uh, voted in and put in by businessmen and are hirelings. They were hired. No anointing. 
You can go to Bible school, and if they think you have some kind of anointing, they just put you in the Bible school and say, go to Bible school, and then when you come back, yeah, we're going to install you as a pastor. These are learned behaviors. We can't push the apostles out. We're not pushing the pastors out. We're not pushing the teachers out. I challenge you to shift. Amen. To shift. Amen. And to this apostolic paradigm. I'm going to come back over here in a couple of days. And I'm going to reveal some other things and a lot of the damage that it has done. And many don't understand it. I know you don't understand all of it. I shared a few scriptures with you. The first church was apostolic and prophetic. Barnabas went in. He was the one that went. Not a pastor. Are y'all listening to me? I know it stretches some of you. Stay with me. God bless all of you. And I want you to be encouraged. Let me pray. Father, thank you, Lord, for these people. Bless them, strengthen them, keep them. And Lord, more than anything, bring them to a place of deliverance from this religious control, manipulation, and paradigm in Jesus' name that is outdated and antiquated and raise them up and teach them how to fight. And I thank you, Lord, that we'll do equipping and training and we'll build the saints. We'll equip them and train them for the work of the ministry in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless all of you. I just want to come on for a few minutes to share that with you. God bless all of you. If you would like to see what we're doing, go to touchofthemasterhmi.org. Touchofthemasterhmi.org. There's products there you want to sew. You can. You don't have to, but you can go and see what it is that we're doing. God bless you.